Hi there. Welcome back to our video series of building recommendation systems with TensorFlow. My name is Wei, and I'm a developer advocate at Google. Previously, all our discussions are focused on server-side recommendations. In this video, we're going to explore something new, on-device recommendation. You might be wondering, why do I want to do recommendation on-device instead of on-server? Well, there are a variety of reasons. First, when we run ML models on-device, we have better user privacy protection because there's no need to send the user data to server side. We can also achieve lower latency and a faster response to users' context and status change. In addition, this helps us save battery and bypass network dependency. Lastly, since the computation runs on user devices, we can save up our server resources, which could be quite significant if you are, have a lot of users. There are a number of practical use cases of on-device recommendations. For example, we can generate media playlists based on users' on-device activities, like watch listen history. Or we can recommend apps based on on-device app usage behaviors. Another example is to predict next user action based on user behavior. On this, use cases can be achieved on-device using our on-device recommendation framework. Before we dive into how to use our own device recommendation framework, we need to talk a little bit about the tooling we're going to use. We are going to use TensorFlow Lite, Google's ML framework for edge devices, which include both mobile and embedded devices. While TensorFlow runs on workstation, desktop, and server, TensorFlow Lite runs on Android and iOS and embedded devices, such as the Raspberry Pi and the Edge TPU. You can also run it on microcontrollers. The overall workflow of using TFLite is first to train a model using TensorFlow and then use TFLite converter to convert the trained model to TFLite model. And lastly, use the TFLite interpreter to run the converted model on mobile devices. Our recommendation framework follows the same paradigm. At a high level, we use a dual encoder model architecture with context encoder encoding sequential user history and label encoder encoding predicted recommendation candidates. We use the similarity between context and label encodings to represent the likelihood that the predicted candidate meets the user's needs. We have included three different sequential user history encoding techniques. First, back of words encoder, which averages user activities embeddings without considering context order. Second, convolutional neural network encoder, which applies multiple layers of convolutional neural networks to gather context encoding. Lastly, recurrent neural network encoder, which applies recurrent neural networks to encode context sequence. To model each user activity, we could use the ID of the activity item, or multiple features of the item, or a combination of both. The feature-based model utilizes multiple features to collectively encode user behaviors. We have built an adaptive on-device recommendation framework based on this model architecture. Let's walk through how you can use it. First, we clone the TensorFlow example repository and install the dependencies. Next, we prepare the movie lens dataset for training. This is the command we used in our last video for sequential recommendation with TensorFlow recommenders. The script will download the dataset, group moving IDs by user and order per user movie rating records by timestamp. Here's a, a sample of our training example. Here you can see 10 movie IDs and their corresponding release years ordered by timestamp in MovieLens dataset. You can also see the concatenated movie genre and movie ratings. Lastly, we have the label movie ID for the next movie prediction. Once we have the training data ready, we can run this command to train the model with a number of hyperparameters. Note that we specified a configuration file here. We'll discuss how to customize your model using this config file in a minute. Also, pay attention to the run mode here. We set it to train and evolve. After training, we can use this command 
to export the model to TFLight. This time, we set run mode to export so that we can generate a TFLight model at the end. Once we have the TFLight model ready, we can use the standard TFLight interpreter to invoke it. If you are not familiar with TFLight APIs, I highly recommend checking out the TFLight documentation to learn more. Here, we're just creating the interpreter and finding the input tensor indices. Then we set the input tensors and invoke the interpreter. Lastly, we get the output tensors out of the interpreter and find the top movies predicted by our model. So that's how you use the TFLight Python API. If you want to do it in an Android app, it's very similar in Java. Here, I'm just showing you how to invoke the interpreter. Please check out our open source Android reference app for more details. Now you have seen the overall workflow of using our own device recommendation framework. But before we, we wrap up here, I want to make two more points. First, TFLight Model Maker, which is a tool that greatly simplifies the training workflow for TFLight models, already supports recommendation models. You can use a few lines of code to train your own model using Model Maker. Definitely check it out if you are just getting started. Second, remember when we train the model, we specified a config file like this. This file allows you to customize the model architecture. This is how a sample config file looks like. You can customize the mailing size, feature length of, or encoder type here. You can also customize how you encode your label as well. This makes our framework adaptive to your needs. So that's it. We have just walked you through how to use our adaptive on-device recommendation framework to build an on-device recommendation app. One last thing I want to quickly point out is that although this framework is primarily designed to create on-device recommendation models, there's nothing that keeps you from using it for server-side usage cases. In case you have such a need, you can run the exported TFLight models on desktop or on servers. Since TFLight is cross-platform, or you can simply just use the exported saved model instead. Please check out the reference links here to learn more. Thank you for watching this video. See you next time.